Five things that you want to bring back from your next trip to Japan. You're listening to the Daidokoro video podcast. Hi, I'm Pat Tokuyama, and you're about to discover some of the tastiest ways to feed your mind, body, and soul. A pharmacist by training, you may know me as the founder of All Day I Eat Like a Shark, the food blog, YouTube channel, or as author of several Japanese cookbooks. If you desire to live a healthy life and are looking for a different way forward with a hunger for growth, then this video podcast is for you. Daidokoro is a Japanese term for kitchen. And I'm glad you're here. With each episode, we're going to be bringing clarity to your cooking by blending Japanese tradition and life lessons into bite sized bits that even a shark would enjoy. Ready to make some magic happen? As you guys know, I am a foodie who loves to cook all kinds of different food, especially Japanese food. And you might be wondering what it is that I buy when I'm in Japan to bring home to the US. So in this episode, I'm going to be telling you about five of the things that I usually look for, as well as where you might be able to find them. So the first has to do with、uh, Japanese tea. So as you may know, Japanese tea is world famous, green tea specifically, and there's a lot of different areas that actually produce it. So, depending on where you're traveling, if you are in a green tea growing region, such as near Kyoto or in the south of Kyushu or even just outside of Tokyo, then you might be able to find a tea farm or at least some specialty shops where you can purchase some tea. If you're not close to or don't plan to stop by any of the green tea growing regions of Japan, then you have a couple options. The first is going to be to get some tea at your local supermarket. So, whatever city you're in or town that you're in, make sure to just check out the grocery store. That's always one of my stops when I'm traveling. That's one opportunity. In a department store is another place that I'd recommend checking out for tea because usually they have、uh, specialized little areas that are dedicated to just Japanese tea. And that's another place that I would also look. And then the third place I would look at would be for a specialized tea shop. But I think the first two options are probably going to be your best bet, and they're going to give you the most options for types of tea. So if you thought Japanese tea was just one type of tea, I guess you're in for a treat because there's many, many different types of Japanese tea, ranging from green to roasted to pan fried. To matcha powder, which is a really nice quality green tea that's been powderized, and、uh, many other types. And they all taste different. And it's also one of the easiest things to transport home in your luggage, as well as give away as gifts. The second thing that I usually look for is nori. Nori is dried seaweed that can be used for a variety of different things. One of the most popular uses is going to be for sushi. So if you are into sushi and you make sushi at home, like I do, Then nori is going to be one of the most important ingredients that you actually use. Good quality nori is not only difficult to find, but it can be a little bit pricier than if you were to buy it in Japan while you're traveling there. Plus, it's lightweight and it's easy to find and makes a great gift as well if you know somebody who loves making sushi or loves to cook Japanese food and could use some nori, dried seaweed. The third thing that I always look for on my trips to Japan is dashi. So, This has to do with the soup stock or soup broth that you can use for all kinds of different Japanese dishes and non Japanese dishes. And there's many different forms of dashi. You can find it as a powder, you can find it as little packets or similar to what a tea bag might look like, or you can actually get the individual components of dashi to make it from scratch. So, if you do make it from scratch, what you're going to be looking for is kombu, which is kelp. It's a dried kelp from Hokkaido, as one of the more famous regions in Japan for harvesting and Producing kombu. Second thing is going to be shiitake, which is Japanese mushroom. You want the dried form because that's what you're going to be using to make dashi. And the third thing is going to be katsu, or it's like actually like a dried fermented smoked、uh, block of fish. So it's very hard. It's kind of like a piece of wood. But if you do buy that, you're also going to need to get the shaver. So, it's a lot of work to make it from scratch that way. So, alternatively, if you don't want to shave the, the fish from scratch, what you can do is get the pre shaved flakes, katsu bushi, which might come in a big bag and it looks kind of like wood shavings, except it's edible katsu shavings, it's not wood. And that's another thing that you can buy. It's also very lightweight and easy to transport, just like dried kombu and dried shiitake. And if you're not into making your dashi from scratch, just make sure to pick up a variety of different dashi packs or powder. If you are up for it, maybe you can ask somebody what the ingredients are or try to translate using your phone and Google Translate to make sure that there aren't any things like MSG. Or other ingredients that you might not expect. So that's another thing that I look for. Also, if I do have some space in my luggage and I'm not too heavy just yet, 
I might look for a few heavier things. So heavier items might include things like rice. Japanese rice is pretty delicious and very aromatic, especially if you can find a newly harvested rice or one that's a little bit more higher quality. If you didn't know how good rice can taste by itself without any seasoning, you might be in for a treat if you are able to get some. In addition, maybe some miso paste or different varieties of miso paste. Yes, we can find miso paste here in California or if you have a local Japanese supermarket at home, but the variety tends to be much less than what you would find in Japan. So if I'm going to be bringing back miso, it's going to be some sort of variety or brand that I usually can't get at home. Also, umeboshi is another favorite of mine. Umeboshi is pickled plum, and there's various different types like uh, honey pickled, salt pickled, shiso pickled, and sometimes it's not easy to find different varieties or brands of umeboshi and especially good quality umeboshi, which are the really thick, fat ones. So that's another thing that I usually try to look for and bring back home for my trips. And depending on how much I can carry or feel like carrying, I may bring back a few bottles of shoyu or soy sauce, the artisanal kind. So it's gonna be more of like a small batch shoyu or soy sauce, and it's gonna taste very good. And of course, you're not gonna be able to find that outside of the country because maybe it's just not exported. And the fifth thing that I usually look for are foods. So foods being things like cookies or sweets that are ready to eat. So usually it's going to be something seasonal. So for example, in the summertime, one of my favorite things is mizu yokan, which is a, it's almost like a jelly sweet bean dessert. And also something called unagi. If you hadn't heard of unagi before, it's basically a grilled fish. It usually comes with kabayaki sauce, which is a sweet, savory seasoning that the eel is cooked in. And it's extremely delicious. It's very rich. It may not be easy to find outside of Japan, depending on where you live. And one of my favorite things to enjoy at home because it's a specialized dish. It's a unique dish and it takes a lot of time to make, but you can buy it at the supermarket where it's already prepared for you. And in spite of that, it's still really good. So if you're wondering where you can get some of these things, if you've been to Tokyo before or if you haven't yet, you may have heard or you may be aware of things called antenna shops. So that's the Japanese term for these stores, which are uh, sprinkled around Tokyo in the Ginza area specifically, which is one of the, the districts of Tokyo. And if you are familiar with Japan and sort of the way that I guess things are there, you may be aware that there are regional specialties, like food specialties. So for example, in Okinawa, which is in the south, one of their famous food products is umibudo, which is like sea grapes. And then up in the north, in Hokkaido, they're famous for seafood as well as dairy. Um, but we're not going to be bring, <laughs> bringing back dairy. Um, but they do have kombu, kelp, which I talked about for making dashi and other stuff. If you are in a pinch and you don't have time to travel to all these different places, what you can do is just go to one of these antenna shops um, in that area, in the Ginza area, and you can find a lot of these regional specialty food ingredients as well as prepared foods and other products all within you know, a short walking distance of each other. And of course, don't forget to go to the grocery stores as well as the department stores, which also have a lot of different food products for you to explore, discover, and enjoy. So that was uh, a few of the things that I usually like to look for and bring back from my trips to Japan. I'd be curious if I missed anything or if there's something that you usually look for when you're traveling. Make sure to leave a comment below this video if you're watching it or shoot me a voicemail if you are listening on your favorite podcast platform. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for joining us today from wherever you're watching or listening from. And if you haven't yet, it'd mean a lot to me if you could share your thoughts in a review on iTunes to let me know what you think of this new video podcast. Um, then I can take that feedback and make things better for next time. And to celebrate the launch of this brand new video podcast, we are going to be doing a little giveaway. All you got to do to enter is subscribe and send us a screenshot of your review. Make sure to check out the link in the description or show notes for all the details. And I'd encourage you to share this with a friend or a loved one because if you've gotten value out of it, chances are they will too. Want to try cooking Japanese food at home from scratch? Head over to alldayie.com slash aisatsu, A-I-S-A-T-S-U, to get started today. And if you're new here, make sure to check out alldayie.com slash daidokoro, D-A-I-D-O-K-O-R-O, for all the show notes, bonus materials, resources, and more. 